When yeah. God says what he wants to be done, he's mm -hmm. going to do it. Yeah. And that he is sovereign. That's He's mm -hmm. the king of kings. And I just want to yeah. also ask you, because I know it's like burning in your spirit and your yeah. heart, that you know we're seeing so many shakings. We're seeing so yes. many things that are arising. Like It's a time like no other. What has yes. God just been speaking to you about the nations, about 2024, what's coming? I, it's a very difficult thing, isn't it? Because for many years, the prophets spoke very, very comforting words. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't really see that in scripture. And, uh, uh, you, you know, tell me a prophetic word in scripture where a prophet says, thumbs up, no change <laughs> required. Business as usual, well done you all. You know, that you don't ever see that from any prophet in scripture. And I think we've fallen into this sense where we believe that prophets should come just to say, you're going to break through, you're going to be a success, you're going to advance. Uh, that's not any prophetic word ever in the word of God. That's just biblical illiteracy to think that a prophet is there to tell you you're going to break through. You know, so I, I, that, is a, that is a setting the scene. Um, <laughs> before I prophesy, let's just look at yeah. some scriptural concepts. In latter days which, of course, we're probably in, you get what Isaiah would talk about, great darkness and great glory. They go hand in hand. Mm. Scripture is clear. You don't get the return of the Messiah until you've had the rise of the Antichrist, okay? You, in, in the latter chapters of Matthew, when, when um, Jesus is, is prophesying, he's saying, see to it that you are not alarmed. That's his phrase in the opening verses. See to it that you are not alarmed. There will be wars. There will be rumors of wars. There will be famine. There will be earthquake, all of that. And then, of course, you get the, the great commission and the great harvest of many souls. So we got to think that there are always things that run in tandem, glory and darkness, Jesus' return and Antichrist, wars, rumors of wars, but many souls saved. So you've got to be able to sit in the pool of those that always run side by side. So in all of this, I think we're about to see, this is the word Lord and I am prophesying, about four billion souls saved. And we're in not just evangelism days, because that's slightly different. Evangelism is I save a soul, I save a soul. We're in harvest days. Mm. Now, the Gospels talk about harvest angels. And harvest has angels who help. And that is this mass salvation. Now, here's the thing. How do you get mass salvation? How, what do the harvest angels do? I think you see the harvest angels produce conditions that are difficult because it requires hardship for people to choose Christ. Because when do you just say, I need a savior? Hmm. So I think what you see is glory and darkness, Christ and antichrist, wars. Now, are we going to have a World War Three? The prophets are fairly sure, yes. yes. Are we going to have war in every continent? Yes. Are we kind of prophesying apocalyptic style words? Yeah, not easy, but yeah. yeah, we sort of are. Are we talking about some economies in downturn? Yes. Are we talking about nations in exile? Now, now here's the thing scripturally. You know that nations in the word of God are either being warned about their behavior pre-exile, in punishment in exile, very few nations in scripture are post-exile. Oh, you've done super well. Here's your land of milk and honey. And I would suggest most of the Western world is not in that Canaan milk and honey. They're either in exile or about to go in exile where God says, I need you redeemed. And to redeem you, I have to push you. And to redeem you, I'm okay, let's quote Hosea, with um, some major thorn bushes. You know, so I think we're going to see some really difficult, difficult things. And you don't go, oh, I resist the devil. You go, that's the grace of God. 
that there is hardship in nations because God is more interested in what it will do for four billion souls being saved. Mm -hmm.